Hi, this is Pastor Steve Unwan, and welcome you today to part five of our series on hope beyond all circumstance. Again, I just want to thank you for being a part. Those of you who have opened up your homes, thank you so much for being so generous and sharing your hospitality. Just an amazing thing for us as the family of God to be able to gather together, encourage one another, pray with each other, and even share the stories of what God's doing in our lives. We've got two weeks left, this one, and then one more. And there's always time and always room for someone else to join. So I want to encourage you to invite some people, bring them in, help them just even get a little bit of connection. And even as you're in our church family, when we're in the midst of our services, uh, as you're walking through the atrium, you're, you're coming or going or making uh, time to speak with friends and people that you know, always keep an eye out for the people that are new, that are coming through our doors, who are just really looking for answers, looking for hope and maybe somewhat reserved or feel like maybe they're even a little bit out of place, you and I can really make a difference by opening up our hearts and continuing to have a a real spirit, a real heart of outreach to people. So thank you for carrying that. Thank you for helping us build that kind of a culture in our church family. Well, today we got a great passage of scripture to take a look at. We're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 3. I love the correlation between what we learned in last week about uh, the Apostle Paul unfolding the deity and, and the revelation of Jesus as eternal God, that Jesus did not put aside his divinity in order to come to the earth, but he came fully God and added humanity so that he would be fully God, fully man, our savior, our redeemer, and our coming king. Amazing truths about Jesus. Today, what we're going to find is the apostle Paul is going to add his story. He's going to add his testimony and and open up his life in a very transparent way about what Jesus means to him and that correlation. So as we even start down this road, as you grab your Bibles or you open up your devices, we're going to Philippians chapter 3, and I want you to look at it, read it, think through with me about the fact that every one of us are on a journey. Every one of us have a story. There's things that have made our lives, how we were raised, experiences that we're going through, and in the midst of that, God is working His will, and God is developing our testimony. So let's take a look at it through the lens of Jesus as the ultimate example of humility, the ultimate example of surrender, the ultimate uh, example of a servant of God's will. And then let's take a peek here today about the Apostle Paul, his story, and then let's link ours. So if you're ready, we're going to take a look. Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write to you these same things again. In fact, it's a safeguard for you. So in just four chapters, Paul's going to speak it 16 different times and even a variety of different ways, but basically he's saying rejoice in the Lord. Let your heart be filled with, with joy. Don't be downcast. Don't allow yourself to be discouraged because I'm even under house arrest, but just remember God is at work in all things. And then he gives them a word of warning about some of the challenges of the day, some that we would call Judaizers. These are people who are Jewish converts to Christianity but they want to impose all the Old Testament Jewish law on Christian believers and require for them to be circumcised and require them to honor all the dietary things. And they were putting these boundaries or putting these barriers between new believers or people that would be hearing about Jesus and what it is just to simply serve Jesus. So Philippians chapter one, we're at verse two. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, it is we who by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. So the Apostle Paul is saying, you know, we're believers in Jesus, but we've got to get clear on this. We don't put our faith in our flesh, and that means in the things that we can do, in the things that we can accomplish. It's not even in things that we take on like circumcision in the physical body. But now Paul's going to be teaching about the circumcision of the heart. And that's one of the things that we'll see in other Pauline writings. And basically what he says is if anybody had confidence to put in themselves, if, if anybody should be confident in who they are, their background, their history, you know, their education, I, I would be the one. In fact, probably more than any of the rest of you. And then he starts to unfold these things. He says, If anyone thinks that he has reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, 
of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. So what the Apostle Paul is saying, hey, is if we're going to talk about this and we're going to measure our goodness in front of God based upon our own abilities and based upon these things that our flesh is able to accomplish instead of what God has done for us, then just realize I have a whole long list of all these things that really are probably going to be more than what you could even match. Born a Hebrew of Hebrews. What does that mean? In a day and a time where many of the people were speaking Aramaic or they were speaking Greek, What he's saying is, you know what, I I was raised with the Hebrew language. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. My parents took me in on the eighth day to accordance with the letter of the law. I was circumcised on the eighth day. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. You know that leaders come out of the tribe of Benjamin. All the different things that you could look to, Paul had them all. In fact, he said, you know, I was a Pharisee. As far as fulfilling the law, I was a Pharisee. As far as zeal, man, I persecuted the church. As far as legalistic righteousness, What does that mean? Checking the boxes, doing everything according to to the nth degree. That was me. I was faultless. But Paul realizes that he did all those things, and then he had an encounter with Jesus. He had an encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, and the Lord just basically was saying, you know what? None of those things have have you on the right road. None of those things are going to get you to heaven. And Jesus gave him an encounter. And here's what he says this, verse 7. But whatever was to my prophet... I now consider a loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. And then he says, I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in His sufferings that I may become like Him in His death and somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. So the Apostle Paul is just giving the church at Philippi an amazing insight. And he's saying to them, you know, all these things that once I put my faith in, all these things I thought were so important, all these things I thought made me so great and even better than other people, in the eyes of God, they weren't anything like that at all. And I had to come to the place to set it all aside that I could pursue God's will. Isn't it interesting that the example of Jesus is Jesus is sinless. Jesus is a member of the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But Jesus, in humility, set aside his prerogatives, the things that he could have drawn upon, the things that he could have used for his own benefit. But he set those things aside in order to take the form of a slave, a servant, and to go to the cross and to stand in my place and to stand in your place, that he might be the one who would give his life for the forgiveness of our sins. Beautiful, beautiful message from God's heart to ours. Now the Apostle Paul, he's not trying to say that he's on the same par as Jesus. But what he is saying is, I want you to realize that in my life, I set apart all the things that once I thought made me great. And I just pushed them aside. In fact, I didn't just set them aside. I see them totally different. Where once they were my prized possession. They were my being. They were my identity. They were, they were what gave me my confidence and my assurance of who I even was. I've set all those things aside because I've discovered something so far greater. And what is so much greater is to know Jesus, not to just have legalistic uh, idealism or to have you know all these different parts of the law, all these things. But instead, I have a living relationship with Jesus. And knowing Jesus in my heart, knowing His grace that is forgiving me, knowing the power of the Holy Spirit that comes and fills me and that comes to be my teacher and my guide and my comforter and my counselor, none of these things can even get on the horizon. None of these things can even come close to the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Man, what an amazing testimony for us. What the Apostle Paul, I think, is challenging us 2,000 years later is where are you putting your confidence? 
Where, where do you get your, your self view? Where do you get your strength? Where do, what is the source of your own well-being? Is it who you are? Is it, man, I grew up in this family. Uh, I went to this school. I mean, we're pretty good at, about that, aren't we? Especially, you know, people are like, well, what university did you go to? Well, wh- what graduate school? Where, where did you go? And then it's about jobs. And it's about, well, what's your title? What's your position? And there's so many people that it's so easy to get wrapped up in these things of our flesh, these things of just the natural part of our life and things that, you know, we can, be, we can put our confidence in all of those things. I got the right job. I got the right education. I've got great friends and, and put our well-being in that circle. But, you know, the truth is anything can up, um, overturn that apple cart, so to speak. On any given day, anything could happen. And, you know, one of the things that I think we so often overlook in the sense of well-being is often we take our own health for granted, but health is an amazing gift from God. And so you take any of these things and all of a sudden we realize how vulnerable our lives are. We find out we really don't control the things that we think we do. We're not really just where we are because of our, our good looks, our talent, our, you know, all of our ability to work with people, all of those things. Now we come back and we start to realize, you know what, I am who I am because of Jesus. I'm be- I am who I am because of grace. I am who I am because He loved me and and He took away all of this vain chasing after things where I can actually have a place of peace uh, knowing that my heart is right with God. I think that the Apostle Paul wanted to really bring this home in a powerful way because of the verbiage that he used. He said, I consider it a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus, my Lord. And then he said, "I've, I've lost these things for his sake, but I consider them rubbish. Now, that's an English translation. In the Greek, the, the word is a lot stronger. The, the Greek word is at literally dung, like something that uh, an animal would leave on the street. And you know the stench and the smell and how, how frustrating it is to have to walk around, you know, deal with those things. The Apostle Paul takes all of his treasures all the things that other people would look at and say, man, I wish I could have been a Pharisee. I wish I would have been born in that family. I wish I could have studied under Gamiel. I wish I would have had this. I wish I would have had that. And Paul's saying, you know what, man, it's just like the stuff left on the street. That's all it is. It it doesn't have any bearing compared to how great my life and my heart is. Think about a guy writing from house arrest under the threat of a madman named Nero, and yet he's got peace in his life. He's saying to the people that he loves, I want to say it again, just rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. And he's just pouring his heart out. He's tearing himself wide open and he's giving them an amazing example again. Lay down the things of this world and go in pursuit of something greater. Don't base your confidence, your self-esteem, your value on things that are temporary, on things that that you really uh, can't put full confidence in. Put your faith, put your hope in God. We're talking about hope beyond all circumstance. And man, this is a great moment for us to pause, just a moment, isn't it? And to just let God peel away those walls and those barriers in our own lives and take just a beautiful look inside of us. Are there things that you've been holding on to that God didn't want you to hold on to? Has your confidence been been built upon how people view you? Has it been built upon a relationship? Have you, have you, you know, sometimes maybe even compromised your journey with God in order to appease people? And all of a sudden, those people disappoint you. That relationship might not work out. That job may have disappeared. That promotion may not have come. And all of a sudden, you find yourself unhappy, unfulfilled. You find yourself struggling. The Apostle Paul is trying to speak to us about hope and joy and peace that is deep, deep, and so powerful, it's not attached to all these materialistic things that we so often hitch ourselves to. Amazing truths right here. Go deep with this. Let God give you hope no matter what your circumstance is, whether you're on a high, somewhere in the middle, or even if you're in a tough place. There should be a confidence in our lives that God is the one who can make all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Romans 8 has a great word for us. Who wrote the book of Romans? The same guy who wrote the book of Philippians. Something that's just being layered here today 
for us to take a look at what it is to love God, to let Him touch us, put our faith in Him, and really build our lives off of Him. As we go on here, he, he talks about that he wanted to know Christ, the power of His resurrection, and even to identify with His suffering. Boy, that's pretty different than many of us. We're running the other direction from anything that has to do with suffering or hardship. And yet it is so true. Sometimes our, our greatest testimony is in walking through difficult places of life and allowing God to bring confidence and peace and even joy beyond our circumstance. It's a truth. This isn't just a theory. This is truth that God would speak into our lives. So today, grab a hold of that. Let God touch you with this. And then I love the transparency of the Apostle Paul because all throughout the Scripture, he, he's the guy who would write about, well, you know those things I know that I should do and I struggle to do them. He's the guy that, that talks about uh, you know, the journey of life. And I think sometimes we can almost get like Judaizers where we want everybody to have everything buttoned down. We get the idea, we can leave the impression sometimes as Christians that unbelievers, people that don't know Christ yet, you know, they need to get themselves all you know, straightened out, cleaned up, get things in order, and then they can come to the Lord. Well, we just know that there's no truth to that at all. Our, our heart and life is being welcomed to the Lord. Come just as you are. God loves you and cares for you. And He's going to work in you in a way that is so transforming. So as we look at verse 12, it says, Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of, what, of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on to the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I love that just open, honest transparency. And I, I hope that we can have that even in our conversation today, that as we talk as, as, as family members and believers and and. Uh, people of God, that we just realize we truly are on a journey. We have our story. We have our ups, our downs. We have our trials, our challenges. And uh, there's things that are going on. Life is getting lived and it's real. And there's a lot that we face. And we don't have to go around and, and try to put on some form of hyper spirituality. We don't have to try to put a mask on that, that hides how we feel at times or challenges that we're facing. But we can just be real. The Apostle Paul says, man, the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus. Everything that I once put my faith in, I throw it away like dung left on the road. And yet at the same time, he says, but I got to tell you, I haven't fully accomplished all of this. I'm still in process. I know this. I know the truth of this. And I'm using it to build my life. And I'm walking in the fullness of it. And, but you know what? I'm still challenged. I'm still moving closer to God. I'm on a growth curve. And I would just encourage you, see yourself all throughout your life as a, being in a place of just continuous growth with God. Giving God your heart, your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, your ups, your downs, because that's real life. You know, we don't want this false spirituality. We don't want this, this place that is, you know, so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. But we want to be able to connect with people. We want to be real with people. And that starts by being real with ourselves. Every one of us have things that are coming in our lives and, they're, and you know, sometimes we're, we're pretty happy with our responses and there's other times we think, wow, I, I wish maybe I would have spoke that a little bit different. I, I wish I would have maybe slowed down a little bit. There's a lot of things that go into living life. And I want to encourage you today, grow with God. Open up your heart. Ask for the Holy Spirit to come and to just really give you the same thing that the Apostle Paul was so blessed by. And that is a sense of well-being, a hope and a joy beyond the circumstance to realize it can be tough. You can be facing some real mountains, but at the same time, you can be well. You can have strength in your heart, confidence in who you are, and a peace that comes from God that nobody can give you but Him and nobody can take it away. So lay hold to this just authentic Christianity, this authentic relationship with Jesus. And I know that God will fill you and help you and He'll lift you above all circumstance. Our facilitator is going to come. And uh, my, my hope for you today 
is that you will get involved, share your heart, and uh, let's be transparent with each other, even as the Apostle Paul. You know, you don't have to tell all the details, but let's talk about those areas where, you know, we're in a vulnerable place, where we've got something to share, maybe some things we're either in or some things that we've been through and how God has taken us to the hope that's beyond the circumstance. Thanks again for being here. You matter. Your voice matters. So dive in today. Enjoy your time. God bless you.